All right, hi, my name is Steve Holland. I'm with Rapid Tech. I'm a trainer here. And in this video, we're going to go over the Lenox G20. This is their uh, curved heat exchanger. Most of their heat exchangers going back to like the 1960s and 70s were what they had at one time called the, the Dura Curve, and it was a G series. Um, this is their Whisper heat furnace. Um, also, just so you know, um, this, this course is offered through Rapid Tech, and uh, you can see here's the Rapid Tech. Uh, screen what it looks like when you log in. Um, if you'd like to join Rapid Tech, you'll have to contact us. We'll get you a screen name login. Rapid Tech is a national certification program for HVAC technicians or for those of you thinking about entering HVAC, get your Rapid Tech certification. When you go for those interviews, you're going to look much better than the guy that comes in right after you. Course ID here is Lenox. It's the Lenox G20. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, here's the video. This is the one I filmed the other day. Let's go ahead and take a look at this video and uh, short little video, and then we'll go in possible causes on why this particular uh, heat exchanger fails. All right, let's go over this Lenox. This is a Whisper Heat by Lenox. The model, as you can see, the G20. What do you need to know about this model? Um, there's all kinds of things I can tell you about this model with regard to that thing, a little switch in here, but we're talking about heat exchangers in this, in this series. This particular heat exchanger in this model, Lenox has been using since the 1960s or 70s. I know for a fact because I've worked on thousands of them. They fail in the same exact spot every single time. I'm going to show you where they fail. All right. And uh, this is an 80% furnace, what we call mid efficient. So even though your primary heat exchanger is under some of a, somewhat of a negative pressure, it's under atmos negative atmospheric pressure based on the draft of the chimney. Unlike a high efficient furnace that uses a vent motor where it's drawing the air through, that's under a pretty heavy negative pressure. But I'll show you where to find this heat exchanger failure. My camera got caught up on the insulation. Sorry about that. Technical difficulty there, but you'll get to see it. There's the fracture. All right? You can see it. Sometimes you can uh, you can see it from the front here if you take off. On the older models, what we used to do is we take they didn't have this. You didn't have that. You had basically some burners that came out. These ribbon burners would come out, and then you could look up inside there. But here's what I'll tell you about this particular Lenox or any of the Lenox that have that curved heat exchanger. In the back of the heat exchanger in the front, wherever it curves, it comes down and it curves like this, it's got that, they call it a Dura curve. Wherever you see that is where you'll find failure. And on the back of the furnace, it's going to be right in this neck of the woods, all right? And uh, maybe I'll show you that. Maybe I'll cut that open and, and show you. You're not supposed to really cut them open in the field, so don't be cutting them open in the field, all right? There you have it. All right, so yeah, we had a little problem with the insulation on that one, but the next slide I'm going to show you, um, or the next part of this video, I've got some really good pictures that I've taken over the years. I started doing this, um, you know, 27 years ago as an HVAC technician. I still am, um, but one of the things that that I started doing is I started archiving heat exchangers. If you go, um, if you go visit our heat exchanger safety, it's heatexchangersafety.com. 
If you visit that site, you'll see a bunch of the stuff I've archived. I literally have thousands of pictures of heat exchangers, furnace failures. A lot of that stuff is available on that site, uh, which you can use, by the way, for your service tech. And you want to show a customer a third-party site, it's all there. I've got a homeowner section where they can learn about why their furnace is failing. Uh, great resource to help technicians. I've had technicians from all over the United States send me emails saying, hey, I, you know, I just closed a deal, um, sold, a, sold a customer a new furnace um, because I showed them your site and I was able to identify the problem. I've had other technicians say, I never knew that about that kind of furnace. So that's free. There's no charge for that. Um, if you want your rapid tech certification, though, obviously you have to pay for that. Um, building all this stuff and filming this and our LMS that we have is phenomenal. Uh, the learning system that we have that's online. So it costs money. But uh, just remember with, with our course, uh, our heat exchanger course, it is a nationally recognized course and uh, it's something you can take with you wherever you go. All right, back to this Lennox furnace. Let's talk about um, why this may have happened. And um, let me see if I can find that. There's that fracture. Um, first of all, poor design. I really think Lennox laid an egg on this one. They've made this furnace for many, many years. And I've worked on thousands. I mean, not exaggerating. Um, I probably used to do tune-ups and maintenance PTUs on these things probably a few hundred a year. Um, and I found almost you know 95% of them had these fractures. So I do think Lennox, I, I do think they had a little issue with design here. However, with all due respect to Lennox, because Lennox is a good company. They built some good products. Matter of fact, they had a furnace called the Lennox Pulse. That was one of the most reliable furnaces ever built. It had some other issues with that heat exchanger under positive pressure, and it was a little noisy if it wasn't installed correctly. But they, they're a good company. Um, one of the things that happened back in the 1970s and 80s is a lot of the contractors were not doing load calculations, so we did find a bunch of these furnaces that were oversized. And if you oversize any furnace, you're going to lose a chamber or heat exchanger. So uh, possible causes, let's just, let's just touch on them real quick. Poor design, is it possible? Yes. I can't prove it. And I'm not going to throw Lennox under the bus, but they know that there was issues with this particular heat exchanger. We could have airflow problems, static duct pressure problems. We could have lack of maintenance issues. Okay, Overfired. You know, some guys used to, when, it, when the weather got cold, bitter, bitter cold in northern climates, and if they undersized a furnace or if a furnace was sized for a negative 10 degree design temp, some guys would go in and they would jack up the gas pressure. Well, that's fine and dandy if you're under heavy load conditions and those return air temperatures are lower, but that's not good when it's an average mild winter day. Now you're overfiring a furnace. By the way, I don't recommend you do that. I'm not suggesting that in this video. Um, and then you could also have draft issues here. If you have a poor draft on that chimney or chimney problems, uh, especially old clay lined chimneys or even chimneys that were brick lined and you didn't have the right draft, you know, you could uh, cause what would happen is that flame comes off that ribbon burner and all that heat. And if you're not pulling it through that heat exchanger quick enough or at the proper negative pressure, um, you could have overheating. And so, you know, those are all some of the issues that, that could be going on here. Let's take, a, let's take a look at some of the different um, Lennox furnaces that I've archived over the years. This is the G20, and you can see at the back of the heat exchanger where it failed. Here's another G20, totally different model. And uh, here's a G10. You can see right there it failed the arrow's point. Oh, by the way, all these pictures, we have a heat exchanger guide that technicians can purchase or you can purchase. It's a full guide. It's about, I don't know, half inch, three quarters of an inch thick, probably three quarters of an inch thick very nice nicely laminated um, and we've got most of the popular furnaces in there all these pictures that's where I got it from I took it right out of my heat exchanger guide here's another G20 you can see the fracture and then here now one thing I want you to realize um, if you pull the burners you can usually see these at the back this same curve okay so if we look at this curve right here that same exact curve is in the front of the heat exchanger right above um, the opening of the burner. So right where the burner compartment is, that same exact curve is in the front. They also fail there and you'll see fractures or cracks in that same spot. So don't just look at the back of the heat exchanger. Okay, so right here in the back, see this in the back? Don't look just there. 
you got to look in the front, way up in here as well. The only way you're going to see that is with a mirror or some sort of inspection camera. We use a very high quality camera system that's optical zoom, infrared. We're not, this is not something you buy at a big box store. These are specially designed, customized cameras. So there you have it. That's your Lenox uh, curved heat exchanger, also known as the DuraCurve many years ago. But I can tell you, if you work on these or service these, you need to check those curves on every single one. And lastly, you can reach me at ethoskill at gmail.com, ethoskill, etho, which you know stands for ethics, skill for skills, or you could reach Scott at 866-992-1717. Um, here's a little picture of our Rapid Tech login. So if you're a member, paying member, you'd get your login, your password, go in, take all your courses, and, uh, and that's where you can get your certification. Um, this is a, right here, I, you know, I've done a bunch of these videos, literally hundreds. I've only got on YouTube a number of them. I'm doing more and more on YouTube all the time. But I keep forgetting to tell you guys that we have another site called right here. It's called the Heat Exchanger Expert or Heat Exchanger Safety. Now realize it's Heat Exchanger Expert without the S. The letter S is not me. That's another guy I know. By the way, he's a great guy. Ellis, uh, phenomenal, really smart on heat exchangers. Um, but we're heatexchangerexpert.com um, or just type in heatexchangersafety.com and you will have access to all of our gallery. That's pictures. Um, all of our stories that we find, um, some videos. There's a homeowner section in there, and that's a great resource to use with your customers. So there you have it. There's another uh, video on, on uh, Lennox Furnace. If you visit our, um, our channel, you'll see I have Train on there, Goodman on there. Uh, we're uploading literally dozens of these things. I'm guessing by the end of the year we may have anywhere from you know, 100, 50 to 100, maybe even more of these videos out there. But again, if you want your Rapid Tech certification, you'll have to join Rapid Tech. All right, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to doing some.